Hello viewers, it's SuperGT here. Welcome to the beginning of the one month countdown to the release of Forza Horizon 3. So the game releases on September the 27th, but on the 23rd, for those of us who are getting the Ultimate Edition. Now the gameplay you're seeing is from the recent Gamescom event. So AC Bongos had a chat with Ralph Fulton of Playground Games. They went through quite a lot of aspects of the game and the full video can be seen at the Xbox On channel on YouTube. Now they go through quite a lot of aspects from this game and I'm going to go through my thoughts on what we can see here. So a lot of people have been asking me, are you going to be getting this game? And the answer is of course yes. Most of you probably think of me as more of a track racer but I do love Horizon and uh, we're going to try and take this YouTube channel to the very next level upon release of this game. I'm actually setting my ambitions quite high with this one. Now as we have um, from Horizon 2 we have the club feature so I'm actually targeting getting number one in the world on the uh, overall on the club's um, point score. Now that is very ambitious but uh, I think it's something that we could achieve if we um, set a lot of open lobbies and the Forza Horizon blueprint events. So I'm going to try to set up quite a lot of events when this game does come out to try to uh, kick this channel into the next gear. So of course subscribe if you'd like to be part of it and um, hopefully when the game does release we can have some really good, uh, good laughs and good fun in this game. So we're just going to come up to an event here and we're going to actually have a quick look at the assists. So the assists actually look very much the same as they have been in the all well all of the uh, previous Forza games uh, recently anyway. So we just have of course the driver tire difficulty which is changing up there and then just the standard braking so we have ABS on and off. Steering I'm guessing that's normal and assisted and simulation. Trash control on and off, stability control, shifting manual, manual with clutch, automatic will be there, cosmetic damage, simulation damage and of course the rewind feature and that all um, determines your payout at the end of the race. Now we go to some buggy gameplay. So of course this game is slightly different to Horizon 2 in that I think the off-road aspect is being pushed a lot more than in Horizon 2. In Horizon 2 it was a bit weird because you could take a Lamborghini and go flying off-road and it would just be as quick as anything else. Now Ralph Fulton actually specifically says in his interview that uh, if you take a sports car or a hypercar off-road the results will be quite different than if you take a buggy like this which is suited to this kind of terrain. Now another thing we can see here is water. He also mentions that going into the water does slow you down. So this kind of reminds me of Forza 6 in terms of the wet weather racing. So in, in Forza 6 you're just trying to avoid puddles basically and, uh, uh, because they slow you down. So it's very much the same case in this game as well as he goes flying into a rock and using the rewind feature there. So, so in this game, uh, from, for those of us uh, from a racing perspective who want to get the fastest times on these tracks with water, you're going to want to be avoiding the water as much as possible because it will be slowing you down. But at the same time, you're going to be wanting to use some sort of off-road vehicle on, on these type, uh, types of tracks um, where you're going off-road most of the time. So that's the end of that race there, finishing in third position. Very nice menus. I do like the menus in these Horizon games. They look really, really nice. Very simple, very basic, but just very nice uh, indeed. There is confirmation of the result or of the credits that you win. And then here is the Horizon wheel spin. I think the top prize I could see there was 75,000. But at the same time, you can win cars. So it's putting 15,000 on this occasion. Now, wheel spins seem to be one of the most um, easy places to get credits in the Forza games these days. And we just take a quick look at the menus. So we can see their license plates. We know already that you can get custom number plates, which is quite a cool feature. Obviously, they're going to block out a lot of uh, swear words, etc., I would imagine. So also there we have upgrades, tuning. Upgrades, of course, is where you add parts to the car. Tuning is just where you alter the setup of the car without adding any parts. 
that is uh, pretty much the same as we've seen in previous games and we have barn finds there as well a couple of cards he goes through here we're going to see gameplay of this 240sx in just a moment but we're going to quickly flick through this so it's a b class car there 692 pi top of s class uh, top of s1 class here the bmw another b class off-roader here so the ford uh, raptor and then the lamborghini centenario s2 class so that is the highest class in the game going up to 999 pi i would presume unless x class is at the very top or something similar and then at the end we have the 240sx on s1 class as well so the top of s1 class looks like 900 pi it doesn't look like it's changed from forza horizon 2 and there we have the final car so this uh, nissan 240sx with a rocket bunny wide body kit so we have wide body kits in the game in the series for the first time um, so we do have rocket bunny and we have liberty walk i'd imagine there are other manufacturers as well of wide body kits featuring in the game but that is unconfirmed we do not know that just yet so this car looks absolutely beautiful look at the rear wheels look how far out they are sticking out but that looks absolutely beautiful i do like the look of that car so now we're going to go to a bit of gameplay as we drive around in this beautiful car driving away from the horizon festival here the outback festival site so it looks like you have a couple of uh, festival sites dotted around the map as we've seen in uh, horizon 2 you have uh, certain sites or you have a festival site in each of the towns within the game this of course isn't a town it's just the outback but there will be ones dotted around the whole map also featuring new in the series is the uh, drift zones so we in the previous games we've had speed traps so you're just trying to go through a speed trap as quickly as possible and then of course you have leaderboards for that so you can compare yourself to your friends and the world and in this game we're going to have drift zones for the first time which is quite cool actually so you enter the drift zone just try to get as many points as you can and then you get rated with stars so we're going to come up to it in just a moment here so uh, there we go so just hold A while turning to E drift and then uh, gave a very nice drift on there then you're going to get rated on points uh, in very very much similar fashion to the old speed traps just going around there very nicely it looks very nice to control the handling does look very nice in this game I'm looking forward to seeing how it feels compared to Forza Horizon 2 and as we can see just on the left hand side of the screen there just going across that bridge was a train in the previous games the only things that moved were the cars now we actually have something else moving in the game which is a train and in just a moment here we're going to see another type of vehicle which is new to the franchise which is drone mode now drone mode is kind of an extension of photo mode so we're going to go here in the menus to drone mode and then you can well control a drone is quite simple and then we can see that at the bottom it says turbo press rb now you can see here that the, the uh, drone can actually keep up with these cars. I imagine those cars are going quite quickly. Now I'm not sure if the camera actually stops here because the guy just, uh, just decides to turn around or because that's the extent of how far you can go from your car. I'm really not sure on that one. So we'll have to see. But this is going to open up many possibilities for content creation where you can actually record your friends. So you can actually use that drone mode in the online um, portion of the game so you can just come out of your car film your friends drifting around or something like that so that is a really cool new feature uh, in the series but that is pretty much going to bring a close to this video guys just thought I'd go through a couple of my thoughts of this recent gameplay so let me know your thoughts and your expectations of the game I hope you can join me in my club when the game does uh, finally release I'm going to try to ramp up the level of videos and streaming once this game does come out i do want to try to do at least one open lobby every week i haven't been doing many recently at all but one a week would be my aim and if i can do that that'd be very very pleasing so actually before we do end we're going to approach surfers paradise which we have seen from um, the older gameplay that this is one of the main cities in the game I'm not sure how many cities there will be in this game because as, as i said earlier uh, the off-road portion is very much pushed and I don't know if that will be the main aspect of the game but we do have a city at least so we can um, just go into that city right now and just see 
The roads are fairly open. It reminds me of Nice actually in Horizon 2. So fairly open roads. So we have plenty of opportunities to keep our um, combos going by smashing into all the lampposts I guess. As we come through here in the uh, Nissan 240SX. But that is going to bring a close to this video guys. I hope you have enjoyed it and found it useful. Remember to subscribe for more like this. And to keep in tune with everything you need to know for Forza Horizon 3. As we come up to the release date on September the 23rd or 27th worldwide. But that is all from me today guys. Thank you very much for watching this one. Goodbye.